Um, I want to next introduce our former congressman, Sam Farr. I so appreciate the fact that Sam has continued to be a patron, to be deeply concerned about the future of San Benito County. Not all of you know, but Sam was an integral part of making Pinnacles into the national park that it now is. And you know, and, uh, in addition, when the Pinnacles was under threat by the oil industry, some of you may not know that part of the reason we launched Measure J in 2014 was there was plans for a tar sands oil field down in South County where they were predicting they would have up to a thousand oil wells a few miles from the National Park and of course then as now we heard from many elected officials about how we were going to be on the gravy train if this all happened that everything would be just wonderful and, and we would have parks and libraries and schools and perfect roads instead of what has happened in so many other parts of the country pitted roads and polluted water. And Sam stood up and sided with us and irritated the oil industry a great deal. And uh, he continues to, continues to show that kind of courage and we really appreciate the fact that he's helped us wade in with this Measure K issue and uh, that he's come to talk a little bit both about his concerns about that development and also about his ideas of a brighter future for San Diego County. Well, thank you, Andy. Thanks for inviting me tonight. I may not have a vote, but I still have a voice. And, uh, <laughs> when I came in here tonight, I thought I was in an Iowa caucus until I heard the prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that opening. It was just sensational. What, how many communities in the United States open like this in a public area? Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> you wonder what makes San Benito County so special, and it's you. It's tonight. It's people turning out to discuss what this county has been and what it can be, even more so. I'm. Uh, I love early California history in this region because this is where California began. Um, San Benito, Santa Cruz, and Monterey were all one county in Monterey. And when you think about it, uh, I say it's, a, you know, we're all here because of sea otters. Uh, the, the Russians were coming south uh, hunting sea otters and sea lions, and the Spanish government in Mexico decided it was getting a little too close. So let's get some defense contractors, known as Franciscan Brothers. <laughs> we'll put them on clean, uh, wind-driven boats, uh, energy efficient, and bring them up and have them start settlements uh, to show the Russians that they, uh, they can't really get this close to Mexico. Otherwise, they don't have any really interest in the area. Uh, and finally seceded the area in about 1845, 1847. And if you think about it, 1849, we discovered gold and had uh, we discovered gold before the Guadalupe, uh, tri uh, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, we wouldn't be here because this would all be part of um, Mexico. So, and, and this place, San Juan Batista, um, is so much a part of that history. And that history, um, really, I mean, the beginning is all around this bay. And agriculture began here. Uh, Pacific trade began out of Monterey Port from products coming out of this county. I mean, the whole, the first banking, the first schools, the first newspaper, the first educational system, first trial in California, all held in this region. You still be a part of Monterey County, except uh, the farmers in the Slings Valley were so upset with the city of Monterey, the county seat at the time, that they, they wanted to get it uh, moved to Salinas. 
at the same time, San Benito said, we don't like Monterey either. <laughs> and uh, we want to be out. We want to go our own county. So they, the Salinas Farmers made a deal with the San Benito folks and say, if you'll vote for our uh, county seat to be in Salinas, we'll support your uh, withdrawal and incorporation as a separate county. And that's how it all began. My feeling is that, you know, I, I represented an elective office for 40, uh, 42 years. And for one thing that's wonderful about politics is it takes you to every geographical spot. Um, because that's where the people are, and you've got to know the territory in order to be an effective representative. And I love, I mean, came from a background of uh, sort of, of dad who was in politics, but his love was really about land use planning. I mean, he developed the concept of scenic highways. He saved Big Sur. He did a, just a lot of marvelous things. And I was young and really not paying much attention, but I, I listened. And as I grew up, I began pulling connections. And what I've seen in my experience of representing you is that there's, in, and I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Colombia, and I just, I love, I love Colombia, I love the country. And every time I came through San Benito in the wintertime when the hills were all green, I felt like I was back in Columbia, and I felt that this is this is the country that, as California becomes so urbanized, that if you really look at the economic future of California, where are all those people in the cities going to go? Because they want to get out. And watchable wildlife is the largest growing industry, greater than all the sports in the world. People coming to see um, condors, coming to see sea otters to see things that you just don't see in an urban area and have that experience of how we can interpret how California began. This is the place to do it. And frankly, your ancestors have done a marvelous job of thinking about how can we preserve the culture of San Benito County and the history in creating State Park at Fremont Peak, creating um, you know, Hollister Hills, other parks. I mean, I think it's, you're probably the smallest county in, in California with the most number of parks. Because you have the local state and you're the only park, the only county on the, on the coastal of California other than Redwoods National Park up in the north that has a national park. In fact, you're the only county in the United States. There, is, there hasn't been a, the, the only one national park during the whole Obama administration was the creation of Pinnacles. And it seems to me that the investment in having that park, and as everybody knows, people didn't go visit a national monument. They thought it was just a statue. But the, if you talk to the people in the Pinnacles, they've just been overwhelmed about the intent, attention that Pinnacles has drawn from people as a national park and coming there not just for wildfires, the wild uh, flower season. And you are the gateway to that. I mean, Soledad's kind of stolen it on the western side. And I think that there needs to be an effort to kind of uh, equal that on the eastern side, because you can't drive through the park, so you've got to see both sides, right? And uh, the only way you can get to the eastern side is to go through uh, San Juan Batista and Alster. And if you want to know how to do that as a gateway city, go look at, a, at a, another rural county that is invested in protecting its environments, Mariposa County. It's a gateway to Yosemite. They don't even have a city in Mariposa. It's all unincorporated. And what stirred me when I learned about this uh, new Measure K to uh, change your zoning, I mean, what I learned from being a county supervisor, you had there's some basics in all this stuff. Every city, every city and county in California has to have a general plan, and that general plan has to have elements. You know where are your hazardous areas, where where is your you know open space, how you are going to zone it uh, according to these elements, including a housing element, knowing what kind of housing you're going to have and what you're going to do to prepare for the future, because. You're not allowed as a city or county just to say, well, the problems that we have here, we want to get rid of and push them somewhere else. So the responsibility for housing your workforce, which has now become affordable housing or becoming you know, inclusionary housing, 
It's a workforce that being driven out of cities. I grew up in Carmel, and every single person when I was a kid, no matter what their income was, lived in Carmel. Now, 65% of the houses are empty. Nobody lives there. It's losing its residential character. And I'm in for just finding all these people that don't, you know, they buy a house in Carmel and they live there. I, I think we could win on that because none of them are registered to vote. And, uh, <laughs> but there's just sort of these ideas that you have to come up with. Now, what, what, what really struck me is that I know this county is poor. It's one of the poor counties in California. And I frankly think part of it is because of lack of using initiative, vision initiative, to try to promote what you, all this incredible investment you have in the natural resources and access to those natural resources through your parks. I mean, I remember when I'm going, when I, was, I took my staff one day, I grew up in, in, in Salinas. They said, have you ever been to the top of Fremont Peak? They said, no. I said, come on, we're going up there. <laughs> And I'd just been in Hawaii, in Maui, and my daughter made me get up at like four in the morning to go ride a bicycle from Haleaka and Crater down to to uh, Aiea and, and have a, a you know, wonderful breakfast with all of us who were on bicycles. And I went up there and I, and I said, we kind of measured that distance from the top to the bottom. It's 11 miles downhill. I said, you know, why doesn't San Juan Batista start Polyocular bicycle ride. Really. You know, it's all downhill. The problem with the road is so bad you can't even get a car up there, much less a bicycle. But you know, that's investment in, in the road. I mean, just thinking of ideas that could open up opportunities for small businesses that are really related to uh, what is your what is your base and. In, this, in the master planning process that the state has set up, is that the, as you have cities and counties, counties have historically been, and still are, a rural government. They have a rural police department, the sheriffs. They have a, um, a rural planning department. They don't do sidewalks and, and stoplights and things like that. That's not really, uh, that's not rural government. They're really out there to handle the rural res the responsibilities and to provide all of the services uh, that government provides. They have a tax base that's um, similar to cities. I mean, it's all the same as the cities. They don't have a, a different tax base. But nobody thinks about, um, let's start commercializing the rural areas so that we can compete with the cities on their tax base. And when I read this purpose of this initiative, it was all to generate more revenue for the county. That revenue should be generated inside the greater city boundaries in the, in the area where the urban services already are. That's where you want to have a tax base for TOT, for transient occupancy tax. If you build in these nodes out along Highway 101, do you think that people staying in those motels are going to be interested in coming to Hollister no. or San Juan Batista no. or going to the Pinnacles? No. no. Those nodes are all for in and out traffic. And it's really criminal that the county is abusing its kind of rural responsibility to try to compete to be, to be urban areas and to tell you that they're going to be pretty little nodes. Here's what Got, I got a copy of, your, of the initiative, ordinance, ordinance excuse me, uh, of Measure K. In fact, it, uh, I called Anthony Modello and I told him I was going to be uh, on the opposite front of the city. He said, well, no, no, no. He said, well, let me, let me send it to you, and when you read it, you'll, you'll understand. And it was all this, you know, we're going to do these, all these nice little notes. Well, look, here's just in the notes what it allows. Now, they told you there's just going to be little uh, beautiful places with some gas stations and some uh, stops and stuff like that. I've never seen any of those things being very aesthetic at all. <laughs> but here's what's allowed in those notes. Motels, hotels, beds and breakfasts, recreational trailer parks, campgrounds, resorts, commercial entertainment, amusement, including theaters, 
of museums, exhibits, information centers, outdoor recreation and education, miniature golf, swimming, tennis, sporting, social clubs, automobiles, surface stations, incidental minor repair, agricultural production, sampling and or agricultural production uh, for uh, or processing not occupying more than 5,000 square feet, laundry mats, laundry services, caretaker units, employee housing, limited or medium high density residential uses which can go up to something like 35 feet, customary um, uh, uh, wayfinding signs. Now what we've been trying to do in Monterey County is tear down every single billboard. We only have a few left. It's Sur Highway. We're selling scenery, so we really are. We control signs in Big Sur uh, like unbelievable uh, controlling. But this says wayfinding signs, including lighting, circulation, landscaping, and operational um, themed wall and billboard type murals. Design themes and marketing plans, outdoor displays or storage areas, vehicle repair shops, including systems and component repair and uh, service, glass, tires, and similar, uh, but not including painting, body, or fender work. Uh, <laughs> truck stops. Truck stops. Uh, medical or veterinary offices. Limited businesses or professional offices. Um, wayfinding signs, this signs is all over, wayfinding signs, lighting, circulation, landscaping and operational programs associated with above uses, themed wall and billboard type murals, um, identifying names, logos and icon geography, whatever that is, fruit and vegetable stands, souvenir and curio shops, roadside stands, other uses similar to the above, as may be determined by the planning commission. That does not sound like a specific plan, tight little kind of. Plan. It sounds like you're building a bunch of little uh, communities, and and half those things don't have any sales tax. Don't pay sales tax on food. So. I don't know where the rep, the idea that this is going to be great revenue uh, for the county. The county would get a lot more revenue out of uh, investing in areas that are already, uh, that are nodes, like Creek uh, Pinos and areas like that. And, you know, and I've urged this county to, to really take a look at what they could do in developing South County. I want New Adrian of Mines to, it's, if there's, if you were to read the early history of California, there's a whole chapter on the uh, New Andrea Mines. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the first big commercial mining businesses uh, in California, way back in the, in the 18th, uh, earlier 1800s. Um, there is so much to sell in this county that has to do with reality uh, rather than fantasy. So I'm here to urge, urge not only a no vote on, on, on Measure K, and I think you're doing it responsible because you're saying we're not only just trying to stop this because we, we don't think it's well uh, thought out and we don't think it's really what we want, but you're going ahead and saying, and by the way, we'll show you what we do we want. And that's the initiative that's being circulated. Let's go from the negative, no on K, to the positive, yes on the initiative. And for God's sake, let's not think that the future, the economic value of San Benito County is a bunch of urban acne nodes along Highway 101. Thank you. <laughs>